So it was uh, Neon McLaren Extreme E who were off the line first of all, Emma Gilmore. Emma Gilmore taking the wheel ahead of Tanner Faust. You can see the course has been wetted, just so you know, it's been wetted with seawater. Yeah, into the switch zone, you can hear them say, go, so out Emma gets and Tanner will get into the car. Look at the speed you're carrying, here's that big jump over the finish, watch this, here we go. They need a little bit of a change of luck, but I think the pace is there this weekend, and it was certainly a great start to qualifying for them ahead of Excite Racing coming up onto the line. Yeah, Tamara Molinaro and Timo Scheider getting their first podium last time out. It was a bit of a surprise. Using hyperdrive there already for Molinaro. They've got matching tattoos this weekend, which is really nice. Uh, Tamara coming in for the changeover. You can see she was just 1.8 seconds down at this point. Timo not having uh, the same influence on the track this weekend. If people are wondering, they brought in another driver to design the track so that he wouldn't have what some of the teams might have perceived as an advantage. Yeah, good job by him. They came into the end of their run uh, just a few seconds off the pace, basically. This was with one lap to go. Joran Christofferson on his run when he took over on the second half, we'll see it in a moment. He had a little moment on the second lap when he was having a very big push, but it was his teammate, Michaela Arlen Kotlinski, was up first. You could see at the end of the first lap, she was 3.3 seconds up. This is about three quarters of the way around. This is where a lot of people have been using hyperdrive on the run up to Ridgeline. Look at this, 7.72 seconds ahead as she handed over to teammate Christopherson. They were using hyperdrive there, of course, because they're all desperate to get those five extra points for the Continental Traction Challenge. And we saw most of the teams using it on the run up the hill. But one team who didn't use it at all, or certainly one driver, Katie Munnings, because she had her hands very full indeed. Yeah, the car not running well at all. It looked very slow and bogged down, and it turned out that she had a steering problem. She was able to communicate that to Timmy Hansen when they came in. They did a reset and out he went and it seemed to behave a little bit better at first but then unfortunately fell away again. Well it behaved a little bit too well didn't it because Timmy did 76 kilometers an hour in the uh, switch zone and the speed limit Jenny is 30. 30. Yes so that was an immediate 46 second penalty a bit of a shame really because with the issues some of the other teams had they might have got a result halfway up the table but with that big speeding uh, fine for want of a, a better phrase they dropped right down the order. Uh, next up Clara Anderson our championship driver taking over from Jutta Kleinschmidt to uh, Fortunately, was injured in an accident yesterday, so she's recovering in hospital at the moment. Clara gets her chance to shine. The car was rebuilt, they broke curfew, but it looked pretty impressive when they're out there. Bearing in mind, this is Anderson's first real go at the car. And joining up, of course, with NASA Alatia, the Dakar legend, who is himself looking to be a little bit further up the championship standings. I think you're on board with him there. Uh, I, I think they could be a great pairing, but Clara hasn't had any seat time since the rookie test last year. Yeah, big ask. And these these guys will be hoping for a repetition of last time out when they won. It is the Chip Ganassi racing team, Sarah Price going in first, and then Kyle LeDuc and the pair of them very at home in these surrounds. Yeah, this track is, is pretty USA spec in terms of just the jumps and the whoops and crests and things. It would very much suit LeDuc if this were a round of the Pro 4 Championship, certainly. Thank you very much. Airtime. Yeah, lots of use of the word dialed, so I think they're up for it this weekend. Out went Kevin Hansen. Listen to this. There it is. S really loud clattering noise. Unfortunately, he broke the front right drive shaft. So that then means three wheel drive. All the power going to one wheel at the front. The car understeers on turning. It doesn't have good traction going up the hills. And poor Hedda Hosshaus had to deal with that for her whole two lap run. Yeah, and Hansen made a decision. He didn't want to damage the car anymore. So he went wide at the finishing line, missing this jump, which led to him getting a five second penalty from the stewards. Uh, Christine Gutierrez out with Sebastian Lowe for X44 and sideways coming down the hill. Little moment for her there. We did wonder if she hadn't done that, if potentially they could have gone top of the standings for the Continental Traction Challenge, but uh, it wasn't to be. Sebastian Loeb, the fastest male driver out there. Yeah, setting a couple of blistering sectors out there. It wasn't to be for him to get the Traction Challenge sector, actually. Last up, uh, not last up, penultimately, sorry. It was Veloce, Christine GZ, getting back behind the wheel again. She's back to full fitness, we think, after that horrible crash uh, in the first round. She took part in the last two races in Sardinia. Seemed like they came a bit early and now she's going to have to rebuild a bit of confidence in that car. We know Christine GZ is quick. She was very quick in Saudi just before the shunt and she's just got to find that headspace again. Lance Woolridge doing his best to keep up with the lap times on the second lap but the deficit just a bit too much to close. Last car out on track in Q1, Axiona Sainz. Now, Laia Sands and Carlos Sainz were fastest in both free practice sessions yesterday, so speed 
and consistency. That is the golden ticket. And it all went wrong here, Jenny. It did, just watch. So they do the door up, and just as the door's done, he looks to go. Unfortunately for him, though, he's not allowed to take that car into drive before their mechanic is out of that pen. So they automatically got a 15-second penalty on top of the box switch, which meant that they were way back in the standings. This was how they finished Q1. So Arlen Kotlinski and Christofsson at the top of the table here. Also, of course, for the Continental Traction Challenge. And then these teams will split into odds and evens to go into their two heat races. And they are off. So you can see they're pretty bogged down at the start of it. Level pegging. It looks like Andretti United have got a good start. They creep away for them. Then Veloce seem to be coming up as well. How are five going to go into this turn? RXR have bailed on this. They're going back behind them. And it's Excite Energy who take the lead. They're around the first turn. They've got to bank it again. Veloce try and go up the inside. Then it's to the left. And you can see it's a real mess out in front. But it's Excite Energy followed by Veloce. Chip Ganassi racing. It's damage for RXR as well. They've picked up a bit of a hit there on the front left. That's just bodywork action but I think they've come together with Excite going through there. Up on the top now coming down around the outside at least three cars have gone to the wrong flag. So three cars have gone completely the wrong way it's at that waypoint off the top of the crest including RXR the last three cars have, have basically gone too deep, so they will all get a penalty for that. So Veloce have stopped, unfortunately, for them. So hopefully there'll be a yellow flag. It won't stop the race, fingers crossed. Now he dives up the inside line, going to try and go late on the brakes into the left hand. He wasn't close enough. That's going to compromise his line over the crest a little bit. He runs wide up the inside. Excite Energy Racing going to take the position. RXI might get there too. He carries enough speed up the crest side by side now. Is anybody going to use hyperdrive here and try and get the advantage? Absolutely door to door here between Scheider and Carl Leduc. Leduc's going to be on the outside as they come up to the next left-hander. Sideways, coming down the crest, but they've all gone in there. Did they come in too quick into the speed limit zone? I think they might have just about got in there in time. As soon as they hit that waypoint, they had to slow down. Christopherson in the slipstream. Oh, he's so close. Scheider goes on the brakes. They dive off to the right-hand side. Christopherson's going to try and outbreak him into the switch zone. Ooh. Oh, they're almost into the back of Hansen. They've closed up so much. Christopherson jumped on the gas as he came back over the, fit, the start line, isn't <laughs> Oh, they're actually driving into each other. That is one that will absolutely get investigated, Jenny, because that's contact in the switch zone. Katie Munnings has got one lap to go, and this would be a massive turnaround for Genesis Andretti United. The power steering didn't work for Katie, and she's been rapid in every session we've seen her in. Oh, that's the Hummer off at the side of the track. So Sarah Price has pulled the Hummer off to the side of the road. Looks what like they've shame. got more damage. That's two retirements then. So the Veloce Racing Machine and the GMC, and she's going again. She's going again. Okay. Well, we'll keep an eye on them at the front though let's watch Andretti United come round Munning's doing a good job and then behind Arne Kotlinski that gap now seven seconds the penalty will be five seconds that Arlen Kotlinski has to serve ah. so uh, something has happened so Excite Energy Racing steering is broken, but where are Rosberg X Racing? What happened in the background of that jump? You could see the dust. So they've lost a ton of time. Something happened before the jump. So it's uh, it's got Katie Munnings is taking it. She's coming down to the finish line now. Going to go over that big jump. That's it. This is the finish in sight for us. So Munnings coming down. Going to fly the finish line now. Andretti United take the win. What a turnaround in fortune for them. Who is in second? I have absolutely no idea. I think it will be RXR. It is. Michaela Arlen Kotlinski comes down for P2. And Sarah Price, I think, was almost a whole lap down, Jenny. We saw them in the background a moment ago. P3 is going to go to the number 99 GMC Hummer EV wow. of Chip Ganassi Racing. Here's the result then of the first race of qualifying two, possibly the baddest race we've ever had in Extreme E. P5 a DNF for Veloce, P4 a DNF for XI Energy after contact in the switch zone. A minute and 57 back for Chip Ganassi Racing, P2 for RXR. Is anything else going to get investigated from that one? But out front, no issues and a win and a total turnaround. P1 for Genesis Andretti United. Green light. Great start in the middle of the grid for him. X44 getting away much better. Tanner Faust on his left, though, for McLaren. Also doing a tidy job. In the background, Ab Cooper have gone back with Alatir has lost ground. Carlos Sainz up alongside. Sebastian Loeb's going to get mugged in turn one here. Going to run a little bit deep. Dirt up over the front of Hedda Hosas' car. She's on the outside. Now alongside Sebastian Loeb trying to put a nose up the inside of Carlos Sainz. They come up towards that left-handed crest now. 
turning in, Sainz in the lead, still just about, but Sebastian Loeb's right there, bumpy right for Sainz, did he run a little bit wider than he wanted to? Alatier as well is close in behind Sebastian Loeb. So Loeb goes on the outside of the jump, Carlos Sainz on the inside, Alatier smack in the middle, down now, look at Loeb, lined him up, so Sebastian Loeb's teed up, Carlos Sainz for a pass down the front straight, there's just a quick left-hander, the nose of the X44 is right up the inside of Echona Sainz, contact between them as they come up to the last gate before the start finish, oh. second of each other this is the flag waypoint 20 that goes down so by that point oh it's tiny on the screen absolutely filthy why does not work it very well as carlos Sainz gets sideways in front of him this race couldn't be tighter between these three absolute legends car stops out comes christina gutierrez runs around to the left hand side of the car Lobe will climb out up goes the goal wing door and there she is, so the gap is absolutely, it's tiny, it's a car length between them. We see Lyle Stans heading up the inside of Gutierrez, over the crest now they are, side by side, Gutierrez flies it hard, but Lyle Sands is going to be there as she tries to shut the door. The science team nearly took a flag down, now she can make the cutback as Gutierrez runs a little bit wide. Lyle Sands trying to fall, but she's still got a hyperdrive left, boosts it away over the crest and gets a she get out of jail free car big time there. There's Gilmore, you can see her coming over the crest and, and the dirt flying up I think this, that yeah, App, Cooper, App Cooper have said to them get a hurry on as well as McLaren because they know that there's a penalty for the 44 car so they think they can get into this and just look at JBXC Kevin Hansen he wants a piece of this action as well they're all trying to claw back time 15 seconds back Sands has run a little bit wide there that's given Gutierrez just a little bit of breathing space Jenny yeah they're just coming out of the Continental Hyperdrive who is going to take this just look at the back of waypoint flag down was that McLaren taking them down quite possibly out in front we're just looking uh, at the X44 coming down this is the battle for fourth and fifth which is pretty intense but out in front it's still a one and a half second gap for Sainz she's trying to get through but can't do it and it's the X44 car that brings it home with Sands just coming in in second place what a fight between those two cars fabulous stuff x44 with that penalty which just slips them back in the standings we'll wait for an official um timing shot to see exactly who goes through so these are your qualifying two results and you can see there hansen and munnings turn things around from ninth collecting two points to 10 points and science and sands getting 10 points as well what does that mean for tomorrow well oh, look at that semi-final one semi-final two rxr do go through into that semi-final one